Welcome to A Few Minutes with the CEO. My name is Al O'Grady, and if you're hearing some uh, background noise, that's because we're live at the PDAC at the Metro Toronto Convention Center, date of today's recording, Sunday, March 6th. And joining me is the president and CEO of Firestone Ventures, Ms. Lori Walton. Lori, thanks very much for joining us. Hi, Al. I'm very happy to uh, be here at the show and to talk to you. Okay, very good. Lori, uh, let's uh, jump right into this. As I said, the date of today's recording is Sunday, March 6th. Just two, day, uh, two days ago, Friday the 4th, uh, Firestone Ventures uh, came out with a press release regarding some uh, metallurgical work. Uh, bring us up to speed. What's going on there? Yes, the news release was with uh, Firestone Ventures and Alexander Mining. Alexander Mining is a group with very promising technology using ammonia leaching on the type of zinc ore that Firestone Ventures has in Guatemala. So they released some exciting results for some initial test work and we look forward to working with them further and uh, finding out more about this promising technique. Okay, now, for the layman, uh, as far as this uh, technological advance is concerned, does this just really make your operation that much more efficient, cost-benefit, and probably uh, probably saving a few, mu a few bucks uh, in the long run? Am I correct in that assumption? That's correct. We're looking at many different types of processing technologies, and this is one of them. The advantage of this technology is we anticipate it would be low cost, and it's something we'll look at in more detail. Okay, so I mean, obviously, you're making headway in terms of uh, cost savings, and that's got to be great in terms of enhancing the bottom line. Uh, okay, as I said, that press release came out on Friday, March 4th. A couple of months ago, I guess just before Christmas time, uh, you, you certainly partnered with a, with a big wig, if you will, uh, Kinross. Uh, tell us more about uh, that relationship. We find we have a very good relationship with the senior gold companies. We have a deal that's been ongoing for quite some time with Gold Corp in Guatemala to explore some of their assets for, for zinc. And we found with Kinross in Nevada that Kinross, of course, does a great job in their gold exploration, but occasionally when they're out prospecting for gold, they find very, very nice zinc occurrences. So we got together with them and made a deal on the Black Mountain zinc property that we'll be starting to explore in terms of drilling in May. We did a full field program out there and it's ready to drill and we look forward to seeing how much zinc there is. Okay, you mentioned Nevada and we'll get into Nevada in just a moment, but uh, just before that you had just alluded to another project that you have going on in Guatemala. Uh, I guess that's where Firestone Ventures, where you're really focusing uh, your efforts, Guatemala, Nevada. Let's start with uh, Guatemala. Give us an update, what's going on there and what can the shareholders expect in the next three to six months? In Guatemala, our main project is the Torlon Hill Zinc Lead Silver property, located just 22 kilometers from the Pan American Highway. Torlon Hill is an established resource, measured and indicated, and it totals 330 million pounds of zinc, 114 million pounds of lead, and some of your listeners might be interested in the silver content. There's already a million ounces of silver at Torlon Hill. Now, the Torlon Hill deposit is open for expansion. We haven't finished drilling it yet. We've been taking advantage of the geological potential of Guatemala and have been acquiring large land holdings in a, an extensive zinc belt extending across the country. So we've had exploration field crews out looking at historical zinc occurrences and we hope to line up uh, many, many targets for future drilling and add to our tonnage in Guatemala. Okay. Is there anything really going to be happening in, in the way of drilling, say in the next uh, three to six months or is that a little bit further down the road or maybe give us a, a timetable? In Guatemala, we're doing more behind-the-scenes work, and that would include this exciting metallurgical work that was announced on Friday. It would be community relations work, environmental work, geological compilations, and we have field crews out in the field doing the basic prospecting and mineral exploration that you need to do before you establish your drill targets. So we're working on that all right now and by the end of the year we should have multiple drill targets in addition to Torlon Hill ready for drilling in Guatemala. I guess to sum it up you're, you're dotting your I's and crossing the T's before actually putting uh, that drill bit into the ground and, and looking for uh, different sources. Am I, am I correct in that assumption? That's essential. We have to pay very close attention to community relations, corporate social responsibility, environmental practices, as well as our, our technical geology work and prospecting. And it's important to put in the proper base so you can build on that when you go into the drill stage of the programs. Okay, let's move on. Uh, another project you have going, uh, going on in Nevada. You were talking about Kinross, but uh, bring us up to speed. What's happening with your project uh, in Nevada specifically? 
We have two exciting projects in Nevada. One is the one project mentioned previous with Ken Ross, and we call that project Black Mountain. At Black Mountain, we have zinc occurrences defined, and we will be drilling approximately 1,300 meters starting in May or as soon as the snow melts. Apparently, they've had quite a bit of snow down there. I didn't think it was possible to get snow in Nevada, but I guess it, I guess it does happen. At the higher elevations, yes, and uh, being based corporately in Edmonton, Alberta, we were dismayed to hear that, but uh, we do have to wait for the snow melt. Uh, that property is all permitted and ready to go for drilling, so we're just getting contractors lined up, and we'll announce details to the shareholders fairly soon here after the show what the plans are. The second property we have in Nevada is called the Antelope Project. It's another zinc property in central Guatemala, or I'm sorry, in central Nevada, now that property was drilled previously, but the operators used a type of drilling called reverse circulation. And what we find is that process tends to grind up all the zinc and you lose it. So we intend to go back and use diamond drilling and look at the solid core to determine how much zinc is there. We did a complete field program at Antelope and came up with a four kilometer long corridor of zinc occurrences. It's in a national forest, so it takes a little bit longer to permit in Nevada. There's a good chance we'll have our permit in place by the fall, so we hope to drill antelope by the fall or early next spring. Okay, Laurie, you've got to be the only person I know that really gets excited about zinc. You know more things about zinc than what uh, uh, anyone can shake a stick at. So tell us about the zinc market, where it's going in terms of, uh, I guess, commodity prices as well, and really why the, uh, why the investor really should take notice as far as uh, zinc is concerned. Well, I think investors have to look at the price of zinc. Right now, it's above a dollar, and that's a very good price for Firestone, and in terms of potential economics for all these zinc occurrences that we're exploring and developing. What we really like about the zinc market is that it's very robust right now. Last year, investors were looking at gold and copper. That's all you heard about was copper and gold, gold, gold. In fact, it still is that case. But this year... We find even doing corporate presentations to fund managers and investment houses, more and more attention is being paid to zinc. Many of the major zinc mines in the world are shutting down. You have a supply demand situation and there's a gap in the supply of zinc opening up. So our goal is to explore and develop our properties and be in position for when that supply gap opens up. Uh, zinc is a very, very important metal. Um, as a measure, your listeners might realize that their vehicles, your average car has 40 pounds of zinc in it. So there's 20 pounds in the rust proofing, we call that galvanization, 20 pounds in the door knobs and, and handles and the steering column, and even in each tire there's half a pound of zinc. So a single vehicle uses 40 pounds of zinc, and for instance last year in China, auto sales were up 32%. Production of automobiles in Brazil jumped 14% in 2010. So looking at those numbers and the supply-demand look, it's looking very positive for zinc. Okay. Laurie, that's it as far as the formal questions are concerned. As always, my guest gets the last word. Any final thoughts? Anything you'd like to add right now? I think investors and listeners would want to watch out for drill results. We'll be starting to drill Black Mountain as soon as it's possible with the snowpack and getting drill information out. Also, we'll let investors know about our exploration progress in Guatemala, but I think there's, there's nothing better than getting the drill turning and getting drill results out there in the market. On that note, Laurie, I want to thank you very much for your time and telling us more about uh, Firestone Ventures. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and Firestone Ventures trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol FV. My name is Al O'Grady, and you've been listening to Lori Walton, President and CEO of Firestone Ventures, on a few minutes with the CEO, produced by RBL Communications. I'm Al O'Grady. Have a great day.